started thinking about inviting you to do a project, I thought, I need to study your, your career more in depth. And so I started putting it together and putting together a chronology and seeing you oscillate between portraiture and landscapes or cityscapes or architecture. How the, the body is really in all of these projects and how labor is in all of these projects and the woman's body. It hadn't been documented that way yet. That yeah. there was no book, there was no exhibition, no survey. I think that once you do a survey or a retrospective, until that time you don't really understand how important it is to get that chronology down. Not only for myself, but to understand where I was at at that time in my life. I had that experience especially with Space Available. That documents moving in and out of studios, which is such an odd thing because the studio space is supposed to be about making work. I decided to make work about that process basically document how hard it is to have a studio space in Los Angeles. That whole gallery is about how to survive as an artist, you know, newly out of school, maybe a new job, but not yet so stable, still trying to build that career. And so we've got space available. We've got your own students yeah. um, there in reflect projection. Mm -hmm. And we've got these windows, that, which are quite abstract. Can you yeah. say a few words about View from here. View from here is using the architecture of an artist or a con artist or some sort of figure in history and looking at that architecture as a frame for the landscape beyond. That work came out of having adventures with my son, going road tripping, which is actually one of my passions. I was trying to both be an artist and a mother at the same time, and being a single mother as well. And one of the first uh, photographs from uh, the series was Toyo from Manzanar. And I remember being at Manzanar, knowing to Toyo's story, and looking through that window onto the snow-capped mountains and just thinking, wow, I wonder what it felt like not to be able to leave this place and so that got the process going about this series and how I could use that window or that, the frame of the window as a way to talk about an historical figure and their vision. El Serena was my home for almost six years. It was the first house I purchased. I remembered El Sereno from my punk days, going to the Vex, that at some point was in El Sereno. And, you know, we would party at the Vex, and it would be, you know, late, and we would just park on one of the streets and just, like, knock out and not drive, and then wake up, and we would be in some dead-end street in one of the hills in El Sereno, and um, it would be so beautiful. We'd wake up and see those green rolling hills. So I bought my first house there. And this was when my son was very small, very young, and a very active boy, but we didn't have a front yard. Like when you're, you've got a house on a hillside, you don't have a front yard. And then the backyard was on a slope. So he really couldn't ride his bike or play in any ways in the front yard. So we would go on these walks. And there was all these in-between spaces um, where people would live, not in houses, a space somebody had abandoned. Um, and I became very interested in how this sort of natural environment of these hills and in-between spaces was part of a large urban center. Los Angeles plays this key role in your work. We see a lot of exteriors facades, um, you don't give us access. Even in the laundromats, we're looking in, but we're blocked. Can you talk about the experience of the city from, from the outside of these buildings? As everybody knows that lives in Los Angeles, Los Angeles is a driving city. You get in your car and you drive, and oftentimes you're driving past things that I've pictured. I'm, we don't spend a lot of time, I think, looking at our 
environment in LA or the built environment. I was specifically driving to find things to photograph. I was driving a lot, especially at night for the Lavanderia series. Uh, I would get up very early in the morning to drive around for the Manuela Stitched series um, so that I could see the buildings without cars in front of them. That's when they become alive, right? When people go to, go to work and then after work go to uh, wash their clothing and then the lights come on and um, you can see the interior during the day, you can. One of the things that I had decided early on was that I, I wanted a book. We worked on the book in collaboration with the Chicano Studies Research Center at UCLA, and this is just a critical element of the show. I'm incredibly pleased. The exhibition and the catalog are beautiful. 